Hey guys, good morning. Thought I'd take this opportunity to showcase what I've acquired over the last couple months, basically from about late February to now. Um, it's been a wild six months since I got back into collecting. A lot of wa you know, wave after wave after wave, and uh, just barely had an opportunity recently to kind of stand back and take a breather and realize, you know, in such a short amount of time, the amount of uh, heavy hitters and grails I've put into the collection. So I just thought I'd share that with all of you. Um, some of them have uh, been online purchases, eBay, etc. A few of them have been uh, through local shops here, but a huge chunk of them have actually come from a uh, store out of Albuquerque, New Mexico named Slolo Vinyl. They, uh, if you don't follow them on Instagram, they uh, came across a huge jazz collection out of uh, Colorado. I think it's been about a year, maybe two, possibly. And uh, with COVID, it's kind of limited the what they've been able to do. So um, they've been using social media to uh, basically every Thursday and Friday, they'll pull a box or two of albums um, and list them. Usually they go on sale anywhere between noon to three o'clock Mountain Standard Time. And um, a lot of heavy, a lot of heavy hitters. That, I mean, I've been very lucky with what I've acquired. There's still a few that I missed. That I really kicked myself for. Maybe taking an extra five minutes to sleep, but it is what it is. Um, but again, if you guys aren't subscribed to uh, or follow them on Instagram, I definitely would. And uh, it's pretty cool that even with uh, this mess that's been COVID, that the uh, stores are finding ways to adapt and that kind of thing. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Um, I'm going to show you the uh, non-jazz stuff first, and then uh, we'll get into the jazz stuff, which is a big chunk of this video. So uh, let's get started. First one is a Sigur Ross uh, This is an original pressing. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, Sigur Ross, you probably, even though you've never heard of the band, you've heard their music. If you've seen Wes Anderson movies, um, they are most notably used in uh, *The Life Aquatic* with Steve Zissou. Um, really good stuff. It's a little, it's a little avant-garde, but uh, if you're into ambient kind of stuff. Um, you gotta check these guys out. This one, however, is a little bit darker. It's kind of more of got some more of the Nordic kind of drumming and that kind of thing, but still an enjoyable listen. There's bits of hard, bit, you know, bits of hard mixed with you know bits of softness, and all around good album. And uh, I think I paid like 15 bucks for this, which for something that's been out for quite a while, even though it's a newer pressing, even the newer stuff that's if it's an original pressing seems to be going up in value. So it's time to pick this up. Uh, the next one. So there's a few of there's a few of you that uh, have been following, you know, have been friends with me since uh, before I started this channel. Know that I've been looking for a uh, well, hopefully an original copy of this, but I would have settled for just a nice plain, you know, second or third pressing. Stumbled on this along with two other albums uh, at a shop about an hour from me last week, and uh, this one I couldn't pass up. Uh, Led Zeppelin self-titled stereo pressing. Um, Dylan, if you're following uh, this video, I think you said it was a mid-70s pressing, but uh, very clean, um, you know, dead wax, uh, hand etch numbers, all that, all that jazz. So I'm kind of curious what pressing this is, but it plays beautifully. And I'm, until I can get a first pressing, I'm very happy to have this in the collection. Finally, um, been wanting a vinyl copy for many, many years. And usually, like anything that one seems like if you uh, look long enough, you'll find one, but you may pay out the nose for it because usually, again, popular bands, popular albums, usually nine times out of ten, they're beat to crap. But I was very happy to find this one. Next one. So. This, this came out of a collection um, that some of it was water damaged, had some moisture issues, but the vinyl was in really good shape, and the cover was okay. Um, cleaned it up a little bit on the back end, but the, uh, the front just got a little bit of a uh, bend to it. It's uh, Chambers Brothers, Time's Come Today. It's uh, Columbia 2 Eye. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that uh, this album actually kind of holds a special place in my heart. My uh, my dad served in Vietnam from uh, about um, 67 through mid 68, and uh, you know he was very lucky. Um, a lot he was one of the guys that you know made it home, but a lot of guys didn't. And 
even those that did make it home, they were greeted with a lot less than the welcome they should have gotten. So there's a couple lyrics on the, uh, the track, Time's Come Today, that always, always kind of hits me in the soft spot. And uh, just, it's just, a, even, even besides that, it's just a great album. I mean, 10 bucks, you can't go wrong with this album. You absolutely can. And if you happen to see, even in a thrift store or whatever, for a couple bucks, as long as I'll beat the crap, pick it up, believe me. You'll thank me later. Now, this is the last of the uh, non-jazz pickups, and I'm saving the best for last. Funkadelic Maggot Brain. This is the second copy I've ever owned. Um, the first one I actually picked up, um, it was that when I was down with COVID. Um, cover was okay. Vinyl was about VG+. I kind of regretted it because I think I overpaid for it. Um, getting kind of standard with the way eBay has been recently. But uh, this one I found locally. And a uh, little bit of a water damage jacket. Um, but it's not unbearable. Most of the damage is on the inside and the gatefold, but it's only a little bit of a yellow, yellowing. Um, so the uh, store I can't went into, um, local to me, I was actually coming in to buy the uh, Tone Poet uh, Dexter Gordon um, release. And uh, one of the guys that works there, we kind of struck up a little bit of a friendship. He's into jazz as well, and he knew I liked a lot of interesting stuff and knew I, we talked about Funkadelic and that kind of thing. He goes, uh, hey, before you buy that, I got something I want to show you. This came in with a collection of stuff, and this was kind of the big boy in the bunch. Uh, see what you think. So pulled this out of the back and uh, took a look at the cover, and you know, so then I pulled out the vinyl. Now, I don't know if this video is even going to showcase how nice this vinyl is, but, I mean, this thing is, okay, I'll be considerate, I'll be uh, conservative. It's a VG++, but I, it definitely grades close to it. excellent. This thing doesn't have a mark on it. Um, and what's interesting about it is it's actually got, uh, in front, behind the, uh, or in front of the dead wax, it actually says a Canadian LTD, which is a variant of the original first pressing, so this is still a first pressing stereo. Um, I had him play test it for me, which I sat there and listened, and I bought it purely because of side A. Side A played immaculate, and I looked at side B, it's like, okay, it's a uh, visual grading, but I'll take a chance on it. Took it home. I mean, my favorite track for, off this album is Super Stupid, and uh, obviously, first first way to tell is put that on. This copy is immaculate. Um, I can, I can uh, deal with the uh, slight water damage on the cover with this vinyl being in the condition that it's in. Um, uh, perhaps maybe down the line I can uh, look for a upgrade cover, but um, honestly, with the way, like I said, with the way this vinyl is, I can live with a little bit of water damage. All right, now. The uh, big chunk of this collection, the jazz stuff. Now, some of the stuff I've already shown, some of it I haven't yet. Um, but, again, just humor me, because there's quite a bit of it, so I wanted to make sure I got everything. First one was an eBay purchase. Um, Yusef Latif, A flat, G flat, and C. This is a first pressing stereo. Picked it up on a buy it now for $18. Um, the dealer uh, had said, that uh, it had, might have a little bit of a playback issue because it's got a few scuffs. Um, had this album uh, cleaned recently, and um, the last track on side A does have a little bit of a tick for about 20 seconds, but the majority of this album plays absolutely beautifully, so maybe 10% of this album has a minor problem, but, I mean, less than 20 bucks for original stereo, and I, I just looked tonight, um, same album is selling for between 75 and 100 bucks and none of them are the ones that were offered were original pressing so yeah I think I did all right and still love the hell out of this album. In fact I played it earlier in the night. Another eBay pickup. This is a uh, Alfie Sonny Rollins. This is an original stereo pressing on Impulse. Um, picked this up from an antiques dealer. She had two of these as a matter of fact and I got the last one. Um, she took a bite now of $25, got the album uh, through the mail, and uh, 
it's uh, reasonably clean, plays really well. Um, one thing about these old jazz albums, they're damn near bulletproof. You really have to abuse them for uh, for them not to play well. Um, pretty much anything on Sonny Rollins is uh, a guaranteed winner. Um, I own a few of his albums, and uh, again, can't go wrong. You can find the soundtrack. It's uh, it varies kind of all over the place. The same as high as 100 bucks, and as well as again for 25 bucks. So if you can find this one, definitely pick it up. You will not regret it. Even a reissue, pick it up and add it to your uh, collection. I think you will really enjoy it. Continuing on the Sonny Rollins train. Um, this is actually my first pickup through uh, Slow Low Vinyl out of New Mexico. This was actually part of a trade we did. This is the bridge, Sonny Rollins, original pressing, on us today, Victor. Um, it's got a few little papers, minor paper scuffs, but uh, actually a really fairly clean copy. Um, was actually very surprised by this album. It's been recommended to me by a few people. Um, Jazz Basement, uh, this album was featured in his videos. Um, Chris Tunes from the Man Cave actually recommended this album. And um, it wasn't high up on my list, I'm not going to lie, but... Uh, it came up as part of uh, what they found, and it was part. It was the right uh, price as far as the trade goes, and I decided to go for it. I'm very glad I did. Um, as somebody that's getting is fairly new into jazz, I will say this: it's kind of hard getting a, getting a grip on how many uh, different labels that these guys were on. Um, I honestly thought that uh, Blue Note was primarily uh, where Sonny Rollins was, and then I discovered he was on Impulse, and now RCA Victor, and again, I've still got a lot of research to do, but um, I'm definitely looking forward to it, and again, I played this album when I first got home from work, and second or third time I've played this album since I've owned it, love it to death. First one out of the Impulse group, again, this was a... Uh, the same same group of uh, albums I got from Slow Low out of New Mexico. Shelly Man 234. This is a original stereo pressing. This thing is clean as clean can be. Um, I was a little worried when I first got it because uh, it had a little bit of surface noise, but again, I was a little, uh, I jumped the gun a little bit and uh, played it without cleaning it first. Uh, typically a newbie mistake, but I was excited, so. You know, forgive me for that, but uh, once I actually got it and cleaned it, this thing is amazing. Um, and, uh, again, it's hard to tell, but uh, you can tell how clean this album is. One thing I've noticed about the original uh, early uh, Impulse albums is the vinyl stock seems to be thicker. Um, for some of you guys that follow me that have been into jazz records for quite a while, Comment below and tell me what you think. Um, if this seems like the the, uh, the grade of vinyl changed over time, because it seems like the early releases tended to be of thicker stock, and then as they got on in time, uh, the it, they weren't nearly as thick. And, uh, and then when you got to the 70s, obviously, of course, the vinyl really the vinyl uh, style really changed. So again, tell me what you think below. J.J. Johnson, Proof Positive. This is a uh, stereo pressing, but what's interesting about it is it's a uh, transitional uh, cover, transitional label. Um, it's a mono jacket with a stereo sticker label. Transitional impulse label. Discogs, as I've said before in a previous video, doesn't even list this particular release as far as the uh, in, in the range of different uh, ones that have come out from the original pressing up until the most recent reissue. So I'm really curious about this one. I have, I've heard that transitional ones were common um, when they were changing over from label to label, uh, but this is the first time I've ever seen something like this. I've seen, you know, the Coltrane Love Supremes with the sticker, sticker, uh, stereo, um, st excuse me, stereo stickers and stuff like that, but not one like this. So. This was actually, uh, again, the third uh, jazz album I ever bought the last time I was in vinyl. And uh, it was one of a few that got lost, I think, between the move from uh, Texas to here. But uh, love this album. It's one of my absolute favorites, and uh, I'm very happy to have it again. One 
Ornette Coleman Crisis. Um, another impulse release. This is one of the later uh, uh, labels, the um, red and black. Um, I'm not sure if this is the original pressing or not. I'm fairly certain it is. Um, this album came out in 72, so I would assume this is an original pressing. Um, plays really clean. The, I'm gonna, I, I gotta admit, the cover is what attracted me to it. Um, I'm a sucker for uh, interesting uh, album covers, and I was like, that's either, this is either going to be really weird or really good. And it's a little bit both. But it was recorded live, and I think in 69, 68, 69, but great album, and it's, it's solid heat for fairly cheap. So, again, if you can find this one, pick it up. Pharaoh Sanders, Village of the Pharaohs. This is a uh, Impulse White Label promo. I actually picked up through uh, Cloud City uh, Records on Instagram. The um, only thing that's wrong with it is um, is it had a little bit of a sticker residue still left over from the uh, one where I pulled the label from the original owner. Thankfully, it didn't rip it. Um, but very, very clean. It's the only White Label promo, jazz-wise, that I actually have. Um, Pharaoh Sanders is definitely an acquired taste, um, and I know some of the jazz guys are probably going to reach through the screen and smack me right now, but it's the truth. Um, I will admit, uh, it took me a few times to get into him, but uh, just have to find the right album. Um, but this is this is really awesome stuff, and uh, again, another one I'm absolutely uh, ecstatic to have in my collection, especially for the white label promo aspect. Now we're getting into some of the real heaters. Um, again, these actually are again same uh, same stash that came from Slow Vinyl. Burnett Coleman Trio, uh, live at the Golden Circle, Stockholm, Volume One. This is a uh, original mono pressing. Beautiful, beautiful copy. Um, it's only got one minor issue. It's got a couple wear marks on the uh, jacket, and uh, but I mean copy is incredibly clean. Um, still looking for volume two, so if any of you guys below have a beat on uh, volume two, hit me up please. Uh, definitely want to complete the the uh, collection. But um, I've stated this before, uh, for those that are getting into collecting jazz stuff, um, prices go up every single day, but this is one of those you can still find reasonably cheap, and it's solid solid fire um solid heat um this was one i was really really happy to find and um of course the only negative is now i want volume two so but great stuff sidewinder lee morgan this is a uh, original mono pressing as well covers an incredibly clean didn't start out this way it actually had some paper scuffing but um if you watch my uh, Jazz Tag 2021 video, I explained how, how what I did to clean this up. Again, if you choose to do that, use it at your own risk. And I only use on light, glossy covers. But uh, very happy with the results. And uh, it's uh, not a perfect copy. You know, it's got a it's got a few scratches, but it uh, it plays reasonably well. And um, I'll happily, uh, happily keep this one as a play saver until I can find an upgrade, but uh, definitely I'll always keep the cover. This was actually uh, the album I was originally intending to buy when I went to a uh, local B&M store and actually found that Funkadelic on the other two albums I showed earlier. One Fly It Up, Dexter Gordon. This is the uh, Tone Poet uh, stereo uh, recent release. For those of you that are getting into jazz but don't want to break the bank on original pressings at least yet, these tone poets are a good way to go. Um, the quality is there, and I'm actually thinking about picking up the second one to keep sealed. Um, I like this album that much. Um, I'm kind of leery about reissues because they have a tendency to be hit or miss, but if this is an example of um, how the tone poets are all the way around, I will definitely be buying more of them. It's highly, uh, will highly recommend this one, and can't say enough good stuff about it. It's around between 25 and 30 bucks. 
uh, depending on where you get it, whether it be online or at a local store. But definitely pick this one up. I mean, this album originally is, is solid, but this uh, reissue is awesome. So, again, highly recommend it. The final two. Now, one of these actually got uh, featured in a previous video, um, but it deserves the uh, retread treatment, if you will. John Coltrane, Love Supreme, original stereo pressing. I am still shocked that I have this album. Um, I've been wanting this album since I was a teenager. And uh, since I got back into collecting, I've owned this album three separate times now. Um, one of these uh, has now gone to um, a friend, mutual friend of uh, Chris Tunes, Tunes from the Man Cave, um, Josh. Again, I'm glad the, uh, that one went to you. Um, please let me know how you, what you think of it. I'm really anxious to hear. Um, and I'm glad it went to somebody that's going to appreciate it. Um, I had a mono copy that was an original first pressing, but it was a VG plus, uh, VG minus, um, but it really didn't scratch that itch, uh, so it got traded. And I, uh, again, if you watch my original video, I explain where I got this from. Um, I actually got this from a dealer out of Sweden. It took about two and a half, three weeks to get here. Um, paid around $280 for it, which, again, seems like a lot, but when I watched a, the same pressing uh, from a U.S. Uh, dealer on eBay, with a minor storage warp or a listed as a storage warp, sell for over $500, this was a steal. And again, if you're looking for rare jazz albums, look look at the dealer's lot of uh, Europe on Discogs. Take your time, look for the right copy. I was very lucky, I acquired this fairly fast, but it took me about five or six dealers before I found the one I was really, really ready to pull the trigger on. But again, I love this album. Um, I'm actually going to most likely pick up a reissue to play the ever loving piss out of that. Because uh, I don't, I mean, I'll play this original pressing when and I'm in the mood, but uh, I love this album too much. It took me too long to acquire it for uh, me to potentially uh, damage it. Um, but again, I'm so happy I have this in my collection. Now, this one was the most recent, recent grail that I found, and I complete, it was a completely unexpected find. Um, I was actually watching a, uh, an original copy of uh, One Flight Up uh, by Dexter Gordon on eBay. It got up a little too high, so uh, you know I was on break watching and decided, you know what, I'm not going to worry about it. So started looking, and uh, this guy popped up. Dexter Gordon getting around. With uh, Bobby Hutchinson, Barry Harris, Bob Cranshaw, and Billy uh, Higgins. This is an original stereo pressing. This thing is absolutely beautiful. It's one of the uh, best uh, condition albums I've got in my collection. I mean, it's rare to find albums from this time frame, this genre, and this kind of shape. And not have to take out a small loan to acquire because uh, those of you that are following me um, that have been into it for a while I know I'm preaching the choir but for the new guys original jazz albums especially blue note stuff it's going to break the bank unless you're prepared to settle on a reissue and build your way up or you just get so lucky you find you get a once in a, a, once in a lifetime uh, uh, chance at a collection um, but anyway, back to the story on this. Um, this was listed as a buy it now for $165 for a, a dealer out of New York. Now with that price, I kind of suspected it might be a reissue. Um, did my research for about half an hour, praying that nobody else was going to find it. And uh, sure enough, it was an original. And uh, it was an immaculate shape. And I, uh, he was accepting offers on it. The first offer was a little bit too low declined it outright and then the second offer seemed to hit the magic number so while I'll admit I won't exactly uh, tell you what I paid for it I definitely got under 165 and from talking to other collectors even if I paid 165 for this I would have stole it um, the dealer stated that he, uh, he had this in his collection for many many years and a lot of his other albums that he was listing were in his collection for many many years um, the only uh, takeaway from this 
and again, it's a minor issue. This uh, side too actually has a little bit of a clouding issue, which both the seller and I determined that it was a uh, pressing flaw. But uh, I mean, doesn't affect play at all. I mean, this cover is immaculate. I mean, look at that. You know, no scratch, no scratches, no seams, no problems. Beautiful, beautiful jacket. Came with the original inner sleeve. I mean. This is the stuff that when you're looking for uh, albums, you pray that you, uh, especially as a new collector or even a veteran collector, come across. Um, I've played this twice so far. Um, blown away by it. Um, I'm looking for a reissue, so again, so I can play that even more. But I never thought that I would find a uh, original blue note in this kind of shape for the money that I paid for it. So. Um, there's a, another, uh, another person in the vinyl community, uh, Chris, once said, I guess there is such a thing as vinyl karma, because, uh, you're looking at it, but, um, this is definitely going to be in my top, uh, top finds of 2021, hopefully there's more than that, but, uh, even if this was the last video I ever did, this would be a heck of a one to end on, but, um, before I go, there's a couple people I want to shout out to. Um, that inspired me to kind of get this channel started and uh, continue it even further. Uh, first one's Chris Tunes from the Man Cave. Second one's um, Dylan at Noble Records. A couple honorable mentions: um, the Analog Archive, Jazz Basement, um, uh, Bob Bradley, and um, there's a few others. Um, I'm sorry if I'm missing you guys, missing your guys' names, but there's quite a few channels that I follow and it's really inspired me to get into this game and I'm really enjoying it. So uh, hope you like the video. Um, if you like what you see, click uh, like and subscribe. Uh, I definitely plan on doing more videos as time goes on. It was a pleasure as always and uh, you guys have a good night.